Hello everybody and welcome back to PDA, your handheld guide to understanding psychological data analysis. Today we'll be covering regression analysis. Now, if you'll notice, there's primarily only formulas up here. If I went through and did all the math, which I have up here, but I did it on the whiteboard, it'd be way too busy and it's already hard enough to see things. So let's start off with what exactly is a regression analysis? Well, it goes hand in hand with the correlation, which is why the episodes follow each other. In fact, we're going to use the data from the correlation that we did. I've got it written up here. If you go back to your notes, I'm sure you can find it too. A regression analysis predicts the value of another variable based on the information of other variables. So in our example, we would do a regression analysis to predict if Jim Joe Bob had an X number of dice, how many tabletop games would we expect him to have? Regression analysis is really the description of the nature of the nature of the relationship between two or more variables and is concerned with the problem of describing or estimating the value of the dependent variable on the basis of one or more independent variables. So let's go ahead and let me try to walk you through what all of this nonsense means. First we're going to start off with finding the z-score. And the only reason that this says O, oh, it's actually not an O, oh, it's a zero. So let's make that a German zero. Actually, let's make that a German zero. There we go. The Germans denote their zeros as different from O's by putting a line through it. And in this case, it's pretty helpful. We're going to go ahead and find the z-score of an x variable of zero, just so we can get two points. You need two points in order to draw a line. This is hearkening back to the y equals mx plus b formula that most people learn. So we're going to get our first data point here. So it's the same z-score formula, except you have your x now, and it's zero minus the mu of x, which if you remember we found earlier, divided by the standard deviation of x. When that's worked out, you should get negative 0.166. And here we're going to take that information we found, move down to the next formula. This is z of y hat equals r of xy times z of x. Who do what now? Okay, let's figure this out. Z of y hat. Well, there's a z of y hat down here, so I guess we're looking for this so we can do the next one. Well, in order to do that, we need to figure out what all this means. R of xy. Well, r was the correlation coefficient, and since we found it of both z of x and z of y, that must be r of xy. So you just plug in, in this case, negative 0.25, times your z of x, which hey, you just found up here. When you calculate that out, you should get 0.41. So we're going to take this z y hat and move it down next in, into this formula to find y hat. Okay, so here we've got the standard deviation of y times z of y hat, which we just found, plus the mean of y. Well, we've got all that information too, so now we can just plug all that in. That should give you 4.72, which is one of your points now on the graph. We'll call it A. So A should equal 4.72. Now we need to find B, which is just another point, so we have to do it all over again. This includes finding the z-score. But now, instead of using 0, we're going to use 1 as your x, just to give it another point. You could use any number you want, more or less. So when you use 1, you should get a z-score of negative 1.35. I'm going to take that z-score, come down here, it's the exact same formula we had before. The correlation coefficient will remain the same. The only thing that changed was the z of x. When you do this, you should get 0.34. We're going to take that, move it down into the next formula. 
everything stayed the same. Standard deviation of y didn't change. The mean didn't change of y. The only thing that changed is your z of y hat. Once you work that out, you should get 4.47. Now here's the weird thing. You'd think, well, that's all we had to do for a, so it must be all we have to do for b. Not quite. There's one last thing you need to do for b. b is going to be a minus the number that you just found, which was 4.47. So we're going to take 4.72 minus 4.47 that we just found, and that will give us b, which comes out to 0.25. And now we can plug it in to the master formula, or the regression formula, up here. This is what we've been trying to get at this entire time. y hat equals a minus b times x. Almost looks like y equals mx plus b. Just a little flipped around. Now, at any point you found another person who said, hey, I have six dice. According to your math, how many tabletop games should I have? Now you don't have to go through all of the work that you did for correlation. You can just pop it in here. So you take 4.72 minus 0.25 times 6. That's all you do. You don't have to go and find z of x and z of y times those, divide by n, all of that. This makes life simpler. However, you do need to go do some work to get the starting stats. I hope this has helped you understand regression analysis a little better, and if you need some help or just want to know some more about regression analysis, have a look at the link at the end. Have a good day, guys!